you won't want to miss Saltburn in theaters. It's a beautifully wicked tale of privilege and desire, and it stars a killer cast, including Barry Keoghan, Jacob Elordi, and Rosamund Pike. Written and directed by Emerald Fennell, it's the follow-up to her Oscar-winning film, Promising Young Woman. Critics and audiences are calling it dark, twisted, hilarious, and sexy. Don't miss Saltburn in select theaters on November 17th, everywhere Thanksgiving. Rated R, saltburnfilm.com. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You will always find the best of what you love or something new to discover with Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. I love to read. I read with my eyes all the time, okay? I'm in bed reading. I'm, I'll be standing up in the kitchen, finding myself getting a late-night snack while I'm reading. But I don't only read with my eyes. I also read with my ears, okay? If I'm driving, why not have a book playing? Yeah, audiobooks are so useful. I like to listen when I'm cooking uh, because, honestly, my hands are usually full with spoons and knives and vegetables and whatnot. So, like, audiobooks are the way to go, and Audible is what saves me every single time. I have been listening to the Red Rising series, which is one of my favorites. I've already read them all, but now I'm going back and getting a different experience by listening to them, and it really is a dream. I love Audible. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. The mission. Find handmade gifts that won't blow your budget. The answer? Etsy. Whether you need something for the home chef in your life like serveware and cookware, or style pieces like rings, clutches, and seasonal jackets for that trend-setting special someone, Etsy has it for all budgets. New to Etsy? Use code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. Maximum discount value of $50. Expires December 31st, 2023. Terms at Etsy.com slash terms. Etsy has it. Well, hello and welcome to Watch What Crap on the podcast rule that crap we love to talk about. On your old bros. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hello, Ben. Hi. How are you? Babe, so Babe. good. You know, Bravo's really just handing us a Housewives buffet. I mean, it's a oh. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Real Housewives of Miami in one evening. I am wow. thrillingly exhausted. I laughed my fucking face off last night. I know. My God. Like, you're putting... This is... It's so good. And, and, you know, Miami getting this like prime spot after Beverly Hills. I'm so happy for the show. The show is so good. It's still so good. I'm just, uh, I'm loving it. Very yeah, happy. me too. So we did a two-parter of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Go check that out. Um, we've got so much coming up in the feed lately that we don't want you to get lost. <laughs> okay, go, mm -hmm. go back. Look at this this show and look at all the episodes because there's a lot. Next week we are going to reco recover. We well, don't need I to recover so. anything. Nothing has been lost. <laughs> oh no, I need to recover. I need to recover from all these shows. We're not taking a break. Bravo's well, not taking a break. Well, we're still kind of the same. Let's be honest. So we're doing. Um, we are covering is what I meant to say. But I'll married be in to medicine. Mode. Yeah. Uh, well, there will be pie. Yeah. And turkey. But either way, we're going to be doing Marriage to Medicine next week, Below Deck Med next week, Potomac, and Salt Lake City. But um, as much as we love this hearty, hearty housewives buffet on Wednesday nights of Miami and Beverly Hills, we're not going to be recapping them next week because we want to enjoy Thanksgiving. We don't want to be podcasting on Thanksgiving. So unfortunately... We have to make a tough choice. You know, part of Thanksgiving is giving thanks for the food you don't eat. You know, you just say, look, we have such an abundance of food. We can't eat it all. So, unfortunately, Beverly Hills and Miami next week are going to be like the Listen, the here's how I like to think turkey. of it. It's Thanksgiving, and we're going to pardon some turkeys. And it's going to be these two housewives shows. Okay, You are pardoned for a week, people. 
Yes. So if you um, feel the impulse to tech to, to DM us or to tweet us and say, are you guys not recapping those shows this week? The answer ahead of time. That is correct. Mm. It's not. Okay, it's not happening. So let's do it. So um, I wasn't going to go through all that. I was just going to say what we are going to do. Well, the I, point I, is, it's a smorgasbord of stuff. It's a cornucopia, if you will. All right. You were coming from a place of abundance and joy, and I was coming from a place of <laughs> yeah, Here's what we're not doing here next the, week, you fucking Here's what's not going to happen. This is the Thanksgiving reckoning. Here's what, what we're not hell? doing, okay? Jeez. Here's what we're not doing. Okay. All right. <laughs> God. Dinner's okay. at 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, fam. Jeez, mom. So um, let's go to Real Housewives of Miami. This episode is called Loose Lips. Um, and it's referring to Larsa. Okay. Larsa's. <laughs> Good old Larsa. <laughs> Larsa. Larsa, Larsa, Larsa. I mean, I saw Larsa was trending earlier this week on Twitter. Um, and I was like, why? I guess they released a clip or something earlier. And everyone's like, she is the devil in a, in a lavender pantsuit or whatever. I was like, what did Larsa do? And now I'm like, wow, she's, she's so terrible. She, it's amazing how, how different ways that Larsa, Larsa finds to be awful, you know? After all these well, years. What I find amazing about Larsa is we thought Larsa was just satanic in her first season i mean this was a million years ago when they aired that season one you know we really i mean she was one of the most offensive at that time to us yeah just her personality was just awful she was an awful human being then this reboot she came back not as terrible like she's still terrible but she's so funny like she's like a cartoon she yeah. really came back a full-on looney tune cartoon <laughs> like she's drawn differently you know it's like a different network picked her up and they're like let's give her a new face a new everything yeah. a new personality a new voice it was like it wasn't hannah barbera doing it anymore but the new mm -hmm. voice actor was still pretty good that's not i'm mixing my metaphors but you know what i mean and yeah. um you no know, she's still under there she okay. added she is still under there i mean um yeah because she used to be just pure evil and then she came back and she sort of like added in uh, onto like the on the pie chart of her personality she she created some space for for being being vapid so she had like a vapid pie slice in there so we sometimes forget that there's still the evil that's that's the rest of the pie you know right because you have to remember like there's a difference between these words there's evil and there's awful like she came back and she's been awful but it's been hilarious but she's right. still evil too <laughs> the vapidity so, of it all but it's also still hilarious so where we ended last week was gertie having this lunch with larza because larza kept following <laughs> gertie around going why are you going to like the public and like calling me fake like like what like i feel like you're calling me fake like like i feel like i'm not really fake like xyz and gertie's like you need to be there for me please i just need you to be there for me that's all i need right now and she's like but why but like why oh my god are you crying so now that's where we ended and that's where we began at this lunch yeah and gertie is clearly on the verge of telling her that she has breast cancer and lars is like what you want why are you crying why are you crying do you want me to cry also like what do you want me to do you want me to cry you want to you want me to cry about what's going on in my life what are you crying about why are you crying why are you crying and you're like oh my god lars please let her tell you and then you will be so mortified or that's what i would assume she would be because that's how most humans are Yes, that would be the natural human response, right? So Gertie blurts out, I have breast cancer. And she goes, like, how am I supposed to know that? Like, you have breast cancer? Like, how do you know? How do you know? Like, you have breast cancer? Oh, she went to Starbucks and they gave her a, a mammogram instead of her cold brew. Because she went to the doctor, Larsa. She that's found why. it at the bottom of a cereal box, you fucking dummy. <laughs> I love that Larsa's first response is like, how am I supposed to know? Like, yeah. why are you mad at me? I didn't know that. Like, instead of <laughs> something just vaguely sympathetic. And so then she won't drop it because she's shocked. And you see the wheels turning, which is rare. Yes. I don't think I've ever said that about Larsa. I've literally mm. never seen wheels turning inside of Larsa, but you do no. right now. It's like, and they sound like this. <laughs> but uh, you can hear them. It's kind of like circus music or ice yeah. cream truck music. And she goes, like, how do you know, Gertie? Like, how do you know? Like, wait, did you go to the doctor? And like, did I feel like the doctor like would have told you, did the doctor tell you like, I feel like? <laughs> Gertie goes, I mean, are you seriously asking me how I know I have breast cancer? I had a mammogram last, okay? She goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. 
But don't put me in this situation right now. I'm uh, sorry, but like you never told me. You didn't tell me. So like, I'm sorry. It's like I, I, everything I said is totally fine. <laughs> and you see why her wheels are turning because she literally says, don't put this whole situation on me. <laughs> Don't put this whole situation on me now. Like, like she's accusing her of trying to make her look bad by hol- yes. withholding the fact that she had cancer. I mean, this I cannot she's believe concerned. she's. I cannot believe her. She's more concerned with the like with her optics on the show in this moment, or her ocular, as Lisa Barlow would say, than she is with like making sure that Gertie is okay. So Gertie's like, this is not a safe space. This, you know what? This is not a safe space. I I can't do this. This is not a safe space. And she goes, I apologize to you. I apologize. <laughs> Like, like she, why don't you get? Yeah, she literally, Gertie's like, just listen to me, please, just listen to me. She goes, okay, but like, I don't know, like, what you want to fight about. Like, I love you. I'm not going to cry for you. Like, do I have to cry for you now? Like, I'm not going to cry for you. Let's what is stop. wrong please, with you? Please. <laughs> this is one of the worst responses I feel like I've ever seen to finding out someone has cancer. <laughs> I mean, how can you not laugh? This is the, one of the worst things I've ever seen. Like, Larza is so fucking sociopathic. What the hell is wrong with this person? So then Gertie goes, Larsa, stop. Listen to me. Listen. I need you to give me a safe space. And Larsa just gives her like this dead fish face. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's just like, did they turn the lights out inside of Larsa? She's just like, <laughs> safe space. Will you be renting it or you can be owning it? And Gertie is like, I just don't judge me. Just listen to me. Like, I haven't told anybody except for now you and like my family. And now you're the fourth person in the group to know. And like, I just hope you take it and take it. Like, I hope you realize this is like a big thing that I'm telling you right now. Like, because I haven't told anyone else outside of that. And like, the reason I was crying was because I had just found out and all that stuff. And like, I was just like hurt. And like, you know, you're hurt. And like, I forget it. It's just like, I don't have the energy for all this, all this small fighting. So just like, please, please. But like, I wish you had told me because like when we first sat down, like, Cause like, I don't like, like, I don't know. Like they don't cut you, do they? Do they do a little biopsy? Like, do they cut you? How does it work? She's like, well, I'm not, I didn't say it cause it's not something like you say when you first sit down. So she says that there's going to be like a lumpectomy and some radiation. And she says, Wait, so like, I- like they're going to like, what? Like she makes this like finger thing, this She's like, what? Like, they're going to tweak you? Like, what are they going to do? She's like, uh, yeah, they're going to tweak you. Okay, two places, okay? And then radiation. Like, you know, listen, I hope you take this in confidence. She's just, oh, my God. Like, I don't really know what that means. But, like, of course. Because, <laughs> like, I have to go tell the rest of the girls. And I just, I don't, there's just, like, never a perfect time. And so I just don't say anything. She's just, well, I feel really, really bad. Um, and I love you, and I'm gonna be there for you, even though you tried to make me look like a total bitch by withholding that you had breast cancer. That's sort of on you, you know. And I did not, in a billion years, know. And like, you're gonna be fine. Like, thank you so much for today. Thank you, thank you for everything. And like, I don't want to have these problems over, over nothing and X Y Z and this and that. Yeah, like, um, so you're getting the check right. This is over, right? Okay, let's go home. Okay, bye. So like, what if I went to TMZ right now and I like told them right now, JK, JK, I wouldn't do that. So then it comes up on the screen six hours later. No, seriously, just six (laughs) hours later. (laughs) The first time we've ever seen a timestamp that had to like reassure us that it was telling the truth. So we're at Marcus's welcome home party, which is already <laughs> hilarious of a concept because he's been gone for five days. So it's at Larsa's place. Zana, her friend, shows up and Larsa's like, guys, I had the most stressful day today. You know, like I go to see Gertie and we sit down for lunch. And then she said, I have breast cancer. <laughs> She just yeah. opens with it. Yeah, and, she, and like it's her Larsa's bad the one day. Who's She's like, can you believe my day? Like, Gertie, like, I'm trying to have lunch. And like, Gertie, like, told me she had breast cancer. Like, literally, she's like, I have breast cancer. And they're like, whoa. <laughs> and then we see, rewind. I hope you take this in confidence. I don't really know what that means, but like, okay. Yeah. <gasps> Fast forward, and we're back. And Lars is like, yeah. She's like, I haven't told a lot of people. I was like, trying not to cry. Because like, <laughs> Could you believe that she messed up my appetizer like that? Like, she's like, we're going to prey on it and stuff. So, like. <laughs> well, that's just, such, such, just so full of shit. I was trying not to cry. You just spent the entire lunch berating Gertie anytime her chin started to tremble. And now you're acting like you were on the verge of tears. No, monster. Ma'am. What a fucking you don't even monster. Have your ducks left. So the girl, one of the girls is like, um, well, I think you're just supposed to be like her friend right now. She goes, yeah. And then Zana goes, yeah. Like, you just like, you need to love on her. And Lorza goes, totally. And then Zana or whatever goes, 
Yeah, and then she she should be good. Okay, so what are we gonna wear? Like, I want to see what we're gonna <laughs> wear today. And these vapid idiots just go like bubbling on about what they're gonna put on. I. Well, they needed to distract Larsa from her very stressful day about finding out someone else's scary illness. So then, now the caterers put out some food, and and now Larsa, everyone's changed. Everyone went and changed, and now Larsa wants shot and everything. And so Lisa and Jody come over. And Larsa's like, oh my God, are you guys like matching? Because they're both wearing denim. So they're like joking that they're like Justin and Brittany, et cetera. Maybe Is not a good, Jody um, Ross Perot in a wig? What's going on with Jody? I can't really figure out he what's is. happening. He is. <laughs> wow, Ronnie. I can't, I can't tell Ross who Perot. he's supposed to be, but no, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know if he's well preserved, if he's badly preserved. I'm not sure what's going on with Jody. All I have to say is Lisa and Jody um, sort of like cribbing uh, a vibe from Justin and Brittany. Maybe not the best couple to uh, base. <laughs> that base was a, a visual. Flop. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was kind of a flop, guys. So then Marisol and Steve enter, and they're both wearing black. So Larsa's you know like, what I'm thinking of? I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Justin and Kelly. You know, the movie with Kelly flop. Clarkson. <laughs> You're like, oh, the, the movie that was a super, super big hit. Uh, flops all around. Most Justin Ann's are flops, I think, actually, at this point. Justin and Whitney, some could argue flop. Possible flop. flop. Possible upcoming Justin. Flop. We'll see. Justin, uh, are there more Justins? I don't yeah, think Justin more and Justins. Haley. I think they're doing okay. Justin and Haley. Bieber. You know what? If I've ever seen a relationship that was built on more solid ground, I just don't think I would believe it because those two are forever a couple. So yeah, yes. those two, those two are going to last. So yeah. then, uh, well, we they lasted them? already a long time. I think. Remember when they ran away from us? At the, remember <clears throat> in New York, they saw us and ran away from us. Yeah. True story. We scared the Biebers. <laughs> No, that's how we and Mr. Bieber. Yeah, that's just <laughs> nothing new to us. Rich people run from us. Poor people run from us. Guys, where everybody runs. That's just that's how we are. So, um, Mar- Mary Saul comes in, just uh, just trying to. Oh, it's me, Mary Saul. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Paul. Man. Yes, yes. It's Mary Saul just got back from gay brunch. God, the gays love me. Are there gays here? Any money? Gays? It's me. It's me, Marisol, walking pride parade float. So she and Steve are both wearing black. So now Lars is like, why is everyone matching? So the Lisa goes, yeah, well, we like to dress alike. I never was able to do it before because Lenny thought it was weird. I was like, please don't turn your matching denim true like Canadian tuxedos or Texas tuxedos actually or both into some sort of like liberation moment (laughs) it's not it's not so they start teasing um, Larza because it's only been five days that Marcus has been gone and they're throwing this party for him and Lisa's like oh my god I mean it's not like you went off to work Am I right? I, I mean, it's ridiculous, but this is why I love you, okay, Larsa? It's, like, it's ridiculous. And Mary Sills like, um, you know, Larsa just saw his lady one for Marcos. It's crazy. I totally get it, because, like, I'm still got a lady one for Steve, am I right? Who wouldn't? Just look at him. Look at, look at him over there. there. He's, look at him browsing for proactive or whatever you call <laughs> What? Activia, that's the better version. <laughs> Activia coupons is what I was trying to say. He really put so low and probiotic. Am I right? Wow, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Steve's just Love like, that guy. hi, everybody. How are you, how are you doing, everybody? Who's a gay brunch? Cockies. Now, Steve, we're at a different party now. <laughs> so that everyone's petting the elephant. So we get payoff for that elephant from last, last episode. We get a payoff to that storyline. Everyone's petting it and stuff. And then Larsa's saying, they're all sitting, they sit down, a bunch of them sit down, and Larsa says she met with, um, she's like, says that she met with Gertie and wanted to understand where Gertie was coming from. And then before you know it, she's like, I have breast cancer. <laughs> What's wrong with her? I know. Because I thought like with Xana and the other girl, I was like, well, maybe because they're not main cast. She's like, okay. But she just goes and tells it to cast members and Marisol and Lisa are both like, what? You know, they cannot believe it. She's like, guys, like, I was trying to like not eat, Okay. Like, that was really difficult. And Lisa's like, what stage is it? 
what stage is it in? She's like, oh my God, it's not like that big. It's just like stage one. But like, still, I didn't know what to say. I was like, okay, so now are you- Now you're full of words. Downgrading her emotions because it's not big enough for you to really give enough of a fuck? I mean, well, not I to make, to not to make it worse than what she already is, but Jesus, man. I think she was just trying to reassure uh, Lisa and Marisol because she could see that they were getting panicked. But Laura, so, but still, she's like, I didn't know what to say. Well, she has a lot to say right now. And she goes, um, then we see a flashback again of Gertie being like, please don't tell anyone. Please keep it in confidence. So now Marisol starts crying. She goes, well, everyone around me is dropping like flies. It's like, well, could we Jesus. have a little bit of could we have a little bit of hope for Gertie here? So she starts crying and saying, like, yeah, my friend's really sick too. So she tells us about this other person she knows that's dying. And they're a young couple with kids. And, you know, that is really sad. But, I mean, that reaction, I was like, well, maybe it was good that she told them first. Because maybe I don't know. Whenever you have really bad news and you tell people, I guess you just never know how they're going to react. But right. it's usually terribly. Have so to they say. toast. They toast to Gertie, and then Alexia and Todd come over, and Lisa goes, "Hallelujah!" Is that how you say it? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hall- 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 yeah, is that how you say? It? Okay, look, I'm confused because, like, why would Todd show up to another person's party when he wouldn't show up to his own party? Got some splaining to do, Todd. So then Marisol, so now Marisol, Marisol and Larsa and Alexa are standing, and Marisol goes, "Okay, tell her what you told me." <laughs> so Larsa goes, "So I went up to meet with Gertie, and she goes, I have breast cancer.' Alexia, I didn't know what to say. I almost fell over." So now Alexia clearly has been told this. Someone's already told Alexia, right? Because she goes, oh, my God, I'm sorry. Like, um, like, Alexia does not respond. Alexia, like Alexia gets a piece of news, like a, a mailing that says, you may have already won. Oh, my God, I've already, oh, I may have already won. It, uh, I've already won. I've already won. So I'm convinced that someone already told her. This was way too low key for Alexia. And just how Varza says it. Yeah, like, like, you know what, like, pretend I didn't tell you because and be like really fragile. Because like, I just had to sit through a whole lunch only for her to tell me at the very end. So like, I mean, you're gonna have to like drag it out of her. I don't know. <laughs> you are worse every fucking time you talk. She gets worse every time. Uh, yeah. So Marcus she- comes home and they're all screaming and yelling for Marcus. And they're like, how long has it been? He's like, um, five days. But <laughs> I mean, I was counting the days so I could see her. <laughs> and Mark and Marcus is like, hey, what's up, Todd? Hey, what's going on? Hey, you're coming home with suitcases just like me now, huh? And Marcus is like, yeah. Hey, I came to your house hoping to see you, brother. Oh, wow, that's funny. That's a funny thing you brought up. Hey, is this like an intervention right now? <laughs> Look, okay, okay, everyone, okay, gather around. I love you guys, and I'm going to be very honest. I started reading the guest list, and I told Alexia this isn't going to work out because I had some people on the guest list that I'm not okay with them talking shit about my family and my stepson, and I heard that there was something said about the Ottoman, and I really love that Ottoman, so you know what? I'm not going to break bread with this person in my house. So uh, that's why I wasn't there, everyone. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, and he's like giving a speech to the whole room, and it goes boom. And he goes, yeah. Know what this person was bad mouthing my stepson three weeks ago? Uh uh-uh. uh. And Larsa goes, wait a minute. Like, who are we like feeling about like talking about? Because like, but Gritty is breast cancer, like. And he's like, you can Google it. You know what? Google it. Google who talked about Todd's Ottoman. Who doesn't Todd want to break bread with in his house? That's it. Google it. Oh, well, you know, I looked, I, I did Google it, and um, I found one recipe for bread, and that was the only thing. You gotta scroll, honey. Just scroll. There's another thing after that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I Adriana. see now. Okay. Adriana. I'm sorry, then. Adriana. Okay. I see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a crap. And here's your prescription. I know just the pharmacy to get this filled. Who are you? A pharmacy benefit manager. A middleman your insurer uses to decide which medicines you can get, what you pay, and sometimes even which pharmacy you should go to. Why can't I go to a pharmacy in my neighborhood? Because I make more money when you go to a pharmacy I own. (laughs) No one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. Bombas presents unsolicited gifting advice. Number one, if they say not to get them anything, get them something. Two, underwear is a great gift, just not for your boss. And three, those absurdly soft Bombas socks and slippers you've been eyeing for yourself, they'll love those. And the fact that for every item you purchase, another is donated to someone who needs it, 
They'll love that even more. Go to bombas.com slash Wondery and use code Wondery for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash Wondery, code Wondery. It's commercial. So Kiki is actually a conspiracy theorist about this because Kiki suggests that um, Todd is uh, using Adriana as a scapegoat so that way he doesn't look bad. Yeah, basically like... Adriana, I mean, uh, Alexia probably had a fight or something with Todd, and he's now saying, no, I just wouldn't be there because someone was there. You know, someone I don't like who talked about our stepson. So then Alexia goes, yeah, you know, like that night, I was like so concerned about him not being there. And then Todd does this thing where he puts his hand on the back of her hair. I mean, it looks like he's picking up a puppy. You know how people mm. pick them up by the back of his I don't like, like this. Scruff. He kind of like, he doesn't yank her hair or anything, but he kind of like takes her by the back of the hair. And he's like, like a horse. It was like that. I didn't like this. And he goes, yeah, yeah, real good, real good, baby. Okay, you know what we should talk about instead? Your awesome event tomorrow night. We have important stuff here. Let's talk about that. We're not going to talk about it. I was like, excuse you, sir. Yeah. We want to hear about your awesome foundation, Marcus Jordan. Said no one ever. So Lars is like, oh yeah, it's um, something called Make a Wish. Um, that's where um, people um, wish that uh, I have uh, more screen time on the show. Thanks. Yeah, and, it's like uh, people do when they're like scrolling through the internet and they want to see like the best toes online. You know, they make a wish and then <gasps> they splurge on my toes. Like that's just yeah. that's how it is. Most charity events are like galas and dinners and like really boring stuff. But like I didn't do that the same old stuff as everyone else does. So we decided to do something completely new to the world of charity and have a charity basketball game. That's never been done before, ever. We're going to have a jerk-off on my feet booth, but also a charity basketball game, too. <laughs> so, like, that's going to be good, because, like, I made a wish, and my wish was Marcus. So, wow. <laughs> um, I'm still not convinced Larza knows what Make-A-Wish is. <laughs> no, I don't not, think and so. And, by the way, spoiler alert, I'm not convinced by the end of the episode <laughs> <laughs> that even no, knows what this is. I'm pretty sure based on like her reaction to the, at the top of the episode, I'm not sure she knows <laughs> what the situation And then Alexi goes, wait a minute. What do we wear to this? Do we have to wear basketball shorts? No, not the baggy ones. Oh, God, that's weird. <laughs> that's, I don't like that. What's weird? They're basketball Mm-mm. shorts. Mm-mm. So, oh, well, I know. No, girls like, wear that? No, Mm-mm. girls wear that? No. Okay, Mm-mm. no. Too weird. Mm-mm. It's too weird. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> this is like more horrifying to her than finding out that Gertie has cancer. Oh, basketball coach? What? Oh, that's not good. So, so now, now it's eating time. They're all sitting back yeah. a little later. And Lars is like, oh my God, Marcus, like, I miss you so much. Like, I want to like, sit next to you because like, I miss you so much. And the camera just stays on her ass. Did you check that out? <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> did not notice that. <laughs> it's like a 20 second shot of Lars's ass while she's like trying to sit on Marcus's lap. So then it just stays on her ass while they're like kissing. And she's sitting on his lap. And so Alexi's like, so Lisa, do you have any new information? She's like, well, I'm out sudden, but you know what? We're already discussing our future, me and Jody. And we just want to make sure this is like a for sure thing. Because I don't want to jump from one relationship where I'm relying on a man to another relationship where I'm relying on a man. What, are you going to get a job? Like, what's your point? (laughs) You're still going to be jumping from, what are you talking about? What do you mean? You're just waiting? What's the difference? Also, Jody's right next to you. Just want to just remind you. <laughs> so, uh, like, says like, oh well, you know, my parents were raised me the same way. You know, like that's why that you know my mother was like that. You know, and that's why that's why my mother got divorced five times because she wanted nothing from the men. And Lisa's like, well, I'm trying to do my own business, not affiliated with Lenny, and I'm gonna do something that's really important to me. It's called, what the fuck is up with Lenny? It's this business where you come in and you say, so what the fuck is going on with Lenny? And I say, I don't know. I was going to ask the same thing. And then you pay me $20 and that's done. <laughs> but a real thing is she's doing a body fragrance line. And Mary says, well, that's a guy. Can you always smell good? What does it taste like? Can you drink it? God, I love a good smelling cocky. Am I right? And she's like, yeah, and that's really good for you. Because you're also very beautiful. Hey, calm down, Pooh Bear. Calm down, Pooh Bear. Here's my Pooh Bear, everybody. There's a real tiger there. Calm down, Pooh. Wow, I'm like really proud of you, Lisa, for being financially independent. And like, there's nothing worse than a relationship that you can't leave when you're just like financially attached to a man. So, anyway, Marcus, can't wait to hang out some more. <laughs> wow, I'm so glad I'm not attached to Michael Jordan's heir. I mean, <laughs> crazy. 
So, so you're uh, going to get some Air Jordan? Steve makes a comment about Air Jordan. She's like, yeah, he's the Air to Jordan. What's your point? He's mine. Sorry. <laughs> Someone's already got him. Stupid. So now the guys all go outside to talk because they just don't want to be around this anymore. And Larsa's set. Now it's all the women are together. And Larsa's like, so I was like really thinking about buying Marcus like a diamond bracelet. And Santa's like, uh, because he went away for three days, I would have said BJ. Kiki's like, what's a BJ? Like blowjob. She's oh, got it, got it. So then outside, uh, the guys are talking, and Marcus is saying, "Yeah, I was gone for five days. I really missed her." And Jody's like, "Yeah, uh, I don't get treated that way. <laughs> I guess I need to take our business trips. Maybe I should just take our business trips. And maybe I'll be treated that way." Is he? Is there a hand up his butt making him talk? <laughs> is there? A, does Jody move? I've seen Jody float in and out of rooms. I've never seen any other movement from Jody. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. He's like one he's... of the reborn dolls on Leftovers. Did you ever watch that show? Where like no. a lot of the pop, most of the population leaves the earth and people get so depressed that they have them recreated as these like life, lifelike dolls, like those reborn oh, wow. baby dolls, you know? He's like that. Wow. He's just like, wow. Well, Is there yeah. one of Amy Brenneman in that show? Was she no. left over or was she ascendant? I can't spoil her. Can't spoil her. Oh, sorry. It. But sorry. She, she does move in the show. So she's already got one over Jody. <laughs> okay. And she has a big fan base. So that's two over Jody. Sorry. Um, <laughs> by fan base, I mean the two of us. So Kiki How is. How dare like, you? Amy Brenneman has a huge fan base besides. No, us. I mean, like, I'm sorry. I meant to be like, like at, at least this. The two of us. I meant to say, like, I was really advancing our love of Amy Brenneman. Well, I was going to say, I did man. not mean to. I did not mean to erase her fan base because I love Amy Brenneman. As, and I, I they were like the leftovers. Her. They were just they just evaporated. <laughs> um, I'm just <laughs> trying to make sure that when we still Amy, when we see Amy Brenneman in some hotel lobby, she's not running from us. You know, it would be nice. To see a celebrity that's just not running away from us. <laughs> She's like, oh, Justin Bieber told me about you too. <laughs> I saw her at a deli once, which is like the most Amy Brenneman place to see Amy Brenneman. It's like, of course, her, like Justin Bieber is in a hotel lobby. Amy Brenneman's at the deli. Okay. So um, <laughs> Kiki goes, like, you know, so Kiki goes through a. Nothing more, um, <laughs> Nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> So Kiki goes on a Kiki thing, you know, because Kiki's like, I'm here for sex jokes only. That's all I will do on this show. So she goes into this long thing about circumcised dicks and how they're different from regular dicks. And like she, one is like an eye closing and another one is like an eye opening. I don't know. I think she was saying she's like circumcised dick is not the same as not the same hard one as, as like non-circumcised. Like the skin is like sleepy. And like the eye is open and the eye is closed. And the eye is open, the eye is closed. It's just different. <laughs> one Observations is like Kiki. Amy Brennanman and one is like Time Daily. <laughs> Separate, they make a lot of sense, but together they can make a good show. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a pretty good show. Pretty Judging good penis. Show. Judging why is penis. That, why is that not done streaming? So Lisa is <laughs> like, she's like, can you believe the 25th will be the one year anniversary of Lenny dropping the bomb on me? They're like, yes, because... Every day you say, would you believe it's been 363 days since Lenny dropped the bomb on me? Would you believe it's been 364 days since Lenny dropped the bomb on me? And you Alexia's know, like, oh, yeah, do you mean the bomb? Like the anniversary day was when you came and told us in the keys, right? And Lisa's like, yeah, a year ago I was fighting for a relationship. And now I'm fighting for what's right, for what's deserved. So are you... <laughs> So are you already there? She's like, no, I'm not there. I feel like he doesn't want to give me any credit. The woman who raised his kids, it's disgusting. I'm disgusted. And the fact. And you can tell they have just heard this nonstop, right? Because non they are all over it at this point. And Mary Stowe's like, okay, all right. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> Cockies, they, cockies, gays love me. They should be sued for bringing my kids into it. And he has tortured me my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> My entire life. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I remember being two years old and feeling like there was a man out there and he hated me. And sure enough, I married him. 
And Mary Sills like, you need to calm down, Lisa, because you found a really great guy. And Heather Dubrow's like, you need to be careful because you do not want this man to leave you. He is not your therapist. He's not your therapist. He is one of your roommates among eight others. <laughs> He's just another so. Canadian. Be careful. Please don't, mis- please don't mistake his general Canadian niceness as someone who is not getting annoyed. Okay. Um, I, w- I felt bad for Heather DeBro because, you know, she was like, I had to sit with fucking Gina, get nailed to the cross because I said one thing to Gina. And now this entire cast like, okay, Lisa. All right, monkey. All right, quiet, quiet. Come on, Lisa. Okay, moving on, moving on. Okay, and they're shut like, up, whoa. shut up. They're like, whoa, Lisa, Lisa, Jody's coming. Stop talking. And then Jody comes, she doesn't care. She just is rant. She's on like a full on rant now. So Jody comes in and walks through and she's like, and even though I have Jody, I'm still crying every single night, every night for a year. I've been dealing with this every. <laughs> <laughs> and Marisol's just giving a yikes face and she's like, oh my God, Joni needs to be canonized right now <laughs> because he's a saint for listening to these Lenny stories. <laughs> Every dog has his day where it takes off. That's not that saying. That's, is it? Yeah. Is that what every dog has his day means? It does Every not. dog has his day. Where he leaves you? Every dog has his day. Every day has, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> Um, so I just thought like, it just meant that like, even every lousy dog people leaves have, you a, eventually. have a special, I thought just like every, lousy people have a moment in the sun. Let's see. Every dog has a, its day. I think it means it's like every dog has its good day. Like, wow, everyone's famous at some point or like it's, it's, it's something good's bound to happen at some point. Every dog has its day. It says everyone will have good luck and success at some, at point. some point in their yeah. lives. Oh my God. I got one. But I love that so, Mary Saul, I love that this cast, it's just like a cast of people living in Miami. They're like, you know what they say, every dog has its day to leave you with nothing. Every dog has its day, every day has its way of being forgotten. It's your birthday, what would you say? Hey, what would you say? Sorry. Got into some Dave Matthews there for a second. So um, anyway, she's basically like, he, she, Lisa needs to shut up. So Lisa's like, I want to say one more thing. Lenny looks at me like a, with a dead face around his eyes. They're like, oh, God, Lisa. <laughs> and then like the, the palm fronds of the, tri- of like the title screen just close in on her. Like, okay, we'll just go to commercial now. <laughs> Everyone's just groaning. So Nicole goes to the boat showroom with Anthony. It's like an Anthony's really rich scene. And I know that this is Housewives. And that's supposedly why we're watching it. I don't know. I'm watching Nicole scenes and I'm feeling um, like these are the really sunny episodes before she gets fucked over. And I think it's just because I've watched way too much of this show or all of these shows where I'm like, this is not going to end well for you. I I actively, when I watch Nicole's scenes, walking around these boats, I just go onto my TV menu settings and I change the color to purple, like sort of a black and white purple kind of filter. Cause I'm like, I know I'm just gonna be watching this scene for the next few years as a flashback to like when they had money. So let me just start now with the filters. Let me just start the flashback filter now. Cause this is what's gonna happen. It's all gonna be like before times. So you think they're gonna lose their money? Is that what you're saying? Well, it'll be scandal. It'll be like all the, it'll be like all this stuff that I thought, all this money that I thought Anthony had it turns out it was all illusion. We're here. I mean, we're here. We're we're buying we're buying boats, and we we don't even have any money. And then they're going to show the scene of them browsing for boats. You know? Yes. Oh, I w- I took it as like I mean like he's going to cheat and leave or something. Well, it's all it's all part of it. It's yeah. A big I'm sorry for coming. all the zipping, guys. I w- What's going on? I've over been there? moving my chair back and forth so much today that I somehow got my backpack caught up in it. And now I had to un. Oh, look, there is Ronnie just pulled out the autobiography of Amy <laughs> Brenneman. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's very professional of me, but what can you do? We've been here a long time and I keep running over my backpack. Kink didn't know it was there. All my gum could fall out on the ground and then we'd really be in you trouble. You don't want that. So this uh, scene was basically, you're right. This is a scene of them basically saying, oh, we're, we're rich. I did kind of enjoy it just because I feel like I've actually not seen a lot of these kind of boats before. So it was sort of cool to see 
these like multi-million dollar boats and these rooms and everything like that. Um, but the entire time I was thinking like, don't buy this. You're about to lose all your money. Don't buy I this. I don't trust Anthony. I think that he's clearly shady in some kind of a way just because he's one of, every time we see someone bragging this much about their money on Bravo, it just doesn't end well. We've seen so many scandals on Bravo involving money and all of this and, when I looked him up, uh, I, I guess he's like a lawyer that just keeps suing all these insurance companies over and over so that they'll just settle. I guess that's his thing. So I don't know. I don't know what's shady and what's not shady with that, um, but it just comes off. You. you know, when we said that, I think the first second we saw him on this show, it's nothing new. But it just makes me uncomfortable because I like Nicole. But Nicole's becoming a little more unlikable to me because she's, it seems like at first she wasn't part of all of that, like... Oh my God, all I care about is money and this and that. But now this season, I feel like that's all she talks about. But Nicole's a, Nicole's a second half bloomer. She always does really strongly at the second half of the season. So this is her like dormant period of the season. So she's just going to be kind of like, okay, but just wait. Second half, she's going to be great. Yeah. So um, she seems to also be doing kind of like, I'm the cool girlfriend. I'll just do whatever he wants. I'm just cool with it. Like, what do I care? Right. Like, he doesn't want to get married? <laughs> okay. Oh, so we'll get married whenever you want to. You know, just just remember that that's like on our mind, right? <laughs> okay. Um, and so I just. Basically, they, I basically, though, they want, they're thinking about having a second child. So they're starting to. You know they're they're going for it. They're maybe gonna have to get in vitro because she's thirty nine, and they also want to get a uh, like a fancy boat so that way they can have sex in it. So that is basically the gist of the scene. Yeah. So then we go to the music, dance, and art academy. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about this scene, and I don't know how I could forget about the scene, but I'm so glad it has returned to my life. Well, we've had two housewives literally in a row tonight. Beverly Hills and now this that have opera singers in them. Wasn't that interesting? Wow. You just never know. You never know how they're going to surprise you guys. So <laughs> Julia takes Zorro, oh, yeah. her dog, to this um, music it's academy. Like a, right. And she FaceTimes Gertie and she's like, Can you keep secret for real? I'm actually learning to how to sing opera. Martina loves opera more than anything. So I want to learn her favorite piece. I want to make an event for her cancer and surprise her. So, um, and then 15 minutes earlier, we see that Julia is speaking to Martina on the phone. And Julia's excuse is that she's going to speech therapy for her accent. And Martina's like, oh, yeah, I understand you better. So that's good. You know, when you speak, it's clear. And so the speech therapy is working. Well done. She's like, ha, 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 ha. practical dog. Ha, 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 ha. She doesn't know. So... Mm. The plan is to sing this opera piece uh, at the party because uh, Martina really loves opera and she really connected with opera and this piece during her treatment. And even though Julia is very afraid of singing opera, she's going to put her fear away because she's going to do something that she has never done in her life and she's going to sing opera. So um, she offers for Gertie to talk with Martina about the cancer and stuff, because Martina just went through it. And so they make a date. And then this guy, Mario, the opera coach, comes in. And Julia's so excited. She's like, oh, I, you know, I'm going to do opera, but I had to hide this from Martina. And then we see a clip of her practicing with Adriana, who plays piano. So Adriana's, like, playing the music. And <laughs> Julia's just like, oh, <laughs> And Adriana so, just stops and goes, Jesus Christ, the stuff you make me do. It sounds like Julia Child going down a water slide. <sighs> so no. now they start this lesson. And Mario, you can see he's like, I can't believe... <laughs> I can't believe this is what they're making me do. Like clearly the dean, like the, the some higher, someone in the administration was like, so Mario, they want to shoot a scene here. It's really important for our school to get this publicity. Unfortunately, you're going to have to play piano for a lady who has no idea how to sing. So good luck. Like, oh, this poor guy. This. I mean, it looks like they hired Bert from Sesame Street to come in, and he's really trying not to make the Bert face as she's singing because it's painful. Yeah. He looks like he's. I don't know, like they're like flashing bright lights in a movie, you know, where they're like, yeah, warning, like, warning, this could hurt you. He's like, ah. And uh, the dog the looks like he's hand, freaking out. Yeah, he's doing the full hand swipe on his face. He, like, he's doing this thing where he's going to look 
dragging his hand all the way down his face just to fix, make sure he's not giving too much attitude. Yes. And, you know, Julia Child on the exercise machine, you know, the, the wiggle machine from the 50s. Like, oh, 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 oh. and um, he's like, open your throat. Don't tell her to open your throat. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. Okay. Hum. And just seriously. Hum. And at one point she's singing. She's like, oh. God, oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I swear, I know the words. I'm like, I don't think the lyrics are the issue here, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I am going to punch fear out of myself because life just passes through you and the train passes on. Speaking of, that's exactly how you sound. You sound like a train <laughs> passing. <laughs> just, just let it pass. <laughs> God help us all. The dog needs an emotional support animal. I mean, that poor dog looks like it would jump if it had the chance. And for the second time this episode, the palm fronds come in. Like, <laughs> this is basically just like, this is like the hook at the showtime at the Apollo. <laughs> like, okay, close it out. Let's go to commercial. Go to commercial. Get out of here. We can't do this anymore. Commercials. It's almost that magical time of year. Speaking of, what's your favorite Christmas story, Ben? Uh, hands down, The Grinch. Same! It cracks me up that he hates all the merriment. Right, and he steals everyone's presents. But then it's like so heartwarming at the end when like the whole town is still singing and he realizes that there's more to Christmas than just gifts. Oh, I know. It hits me right in the feels. Best part is, Wondery has a new podcast starring The Grinch. And I think there's someone who wants to tell you more about it, Ronnie. Hi, it's me, the Grand Poobah of Bah Humbug. The OG Green Grump, The Grinch. From Wondery, Tis the Grinch Holiday Talk Show is a pathetic attempt by the people of Whoville to use my situation as a teachable moment. So join me, the Grinch. Listen as I launch a campaign against Christmas cheer, grilling celebrity guests like chestnuts on an open fire. Your family will love the show. As you know, I'm famously great with kids. Follow Tis the Grinch Holiday Talk Show on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Here comes one right now. So then we get a scene that's really cute of Gertie and oh. Russell walking through a park talking. <laughs> it opens with Gertie going, Russell, you know I hate birds. I feel like we should change our route. You know, the, you know I have a conspiracy theory that, that there's more than five birds in a place they're trying to get me. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, and, you know, at first you're like, oh, that's funny. But then as, as they're walking, you see the birds are like walking along with them like by their ankles. I was like, hmm, she may have a point. <laughs> birds are fuckers. She does they have are. a point. And um, she goes... Side. She's like, yeah, it's like that movie, you know, because I watched that movie. What's a, what's a movie called? He goes, birds. <laughs> yeah, that one. He's no, like, the one listen. about the birds. Birds. Mm. He's not like, ringing listen, a bell. You're going to be fine. The birds are not out to get you. Okay, don't try to gaslight me. It's like that movie. What's that movie called? <laughs> gaslight? No, birds. <laughs> That's birds. <laughs> Different directors, right? No, same director. See, there you go again. Gaslighting. <laughs> So um, they basically what they're talking about is how to tell the kids like she doesn't know how to tell she didn't know how to tell the kids she didn't want to do it because she would get too emotional. And she's like, you know, when I, I wanted to, it, she read about it. And she said, you know, you're not supposed to be telling your loved ones not to cry. And he's like, well, look, I'm only saying don't cry when you tell the kids. That's all I was suggesting. And yeah. she's like, well, that's why I told you to tell them. So he's like, well, I had to Google it. So then he tells us a story, or he tells her how he told the kids, which is actually really sweet. He so just sat sweet. them down and explained to them what was going on. And um, she's like, thank God for this guy, you know? Yeah. And she's like, she's like, she basically is like, she's like almost apologetic. And he's like, listen, that's what I'm here for. She's like, no, no, no. You were not put on this earth to have to deal with my shit. And he goes, no, your shit is my shit. Like, don't worry about it. I'm fine. It's fine. I got your back. It was so sweet. I was like, oh my God, Russell's the best. So then we go over to Lenny's house and the daughter is brushing her hair with a rubber duck, which I have to say. <laughs> I did not notice that. Was the least surprising thing I've uh, seen. <laughs> okay. All right. That's interesting. And um, then basically a pizza man comes and this kid, the kid, Logan, opens the door, gets the pizza. And Lisa is like talking. 
on the phone to Jody upstairs in this big echoey house where her voice is carrying all over the place. And she's like, oh, my God, you want to hear this? Lenny's taking away my car. He has three. I have zero. So I said, you know what? Lenny, I need the car. And so he says, ah, you don't need the car. I'm like, how am I supposed to find a house and a car? So I says, you know what? Here's what we got to do. You got to give me a car and then I get out of here. And then guess what? Here's another thing. Okay. Guess what? I said, why would you do this to the mother of your kids? You're doing this to the mother of your kids. You want, you want the mother of your kids to be okay? Don't you want to be on wheels? Don't you want to find something? This is what he says to me. Mom, 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 quiet, I'll be right there. Yeah, Jody, that's what's going on. I probably should get therapy, but thank God I have you. Mom, mom. Anyway, it's sick. The minute he was done, he moves on, and I don't matter. I mean, this is the kind of man I'm dealing with. And the daughter hears her while she's eating her pizza, and she goes, yeah, I know, I know. Which is, this whole what? thing is so much yikes. This it whole is scene is so uh, very painful sad. to watch. Yeah, and she's like, and you know what? He says, she's going to move in once I'm, once I'm gone. And I'm like, where? In my bed? He goes, like, my bed. I'm like, no, it's still my bed until I move out. And I'm sorry to complain to you so much about this, Jody. I just cannot believe this is all happening. And Jody's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. This uh-huh. is like, this is just huge yikes because, you know, you're not supposed to do that in front of your kids and, like, traumatize the kids or whatever. But in, then on the other hand, she's on a loop because she's been – like traumatized by the whole thing. So she's just on an emotional loop where she just can't stop talking about it. You know, I think we've probably all been there in some, some way. I haven't been through it that bad. That's for sure. Like having kids and getting dumped and all of that stuff and publicly humiliated and all of that. But it is like, Oh my God, I like Lisa. I don't want to see her go down this path, you know? And then there's a sort of another cringy moment. So she goes downstairs and joins the kids for pizza and they're eating pizza, and then the kid is then. Then she's asking how many slices the kids have had, and she's like, "Don't have too much." And then Logan goes, "But it's cheat day," and she's like, "Huh." Well, first she just talks about like, "Oh, this is the time you don't get back with your kids," and then and she's also saying that she doesn't need them stressed, and she doesn't want them worried, and she doesn't want them to pick up on her energy. And meanwhile, the kid's saying it's cheat day, and she's like, "How do you know what cheat day is?" And he's like, oh, it's a day when you don't have a bunch of sugar. Or it's a day when you do have a bunch of sugar and stuff. I'm like, she's like, oh. like pizza and pasta? Listen, I know you love pizza, and I do too. Because at first you're thinking of her being like, you're too young. You guys shouldn't be thinking about this stuff, you know? Yeah. Because that's what we're thinking because we watch it. Right. Like, oh, too, too soon? And she's like, yeah, but, you know, pizza and pasta? Okay, now listen. I know you love pizza, but listen, Logan. You ate enough pizza. That's enough. And then... She's, she's like, like that's it. Like she box. cuts the kid off of pizza. I was like, this scene is. Why just... did you order the pizza in the first place? And I don't like, know what it. she's Too doing. Much. You if can she's... have something healthy. You can have something. I'm like, are you punishing the kid for eating the pizza you got for him? I mean, like, I understand. Like, you if you buy a pizza for your family, you, you may maybe you don't want to get like your kids can only have a certain amount, but just say you're only allowed to have a certain amount, and that's it. But like, don't I don't know. That felt like she was punishing him for. It. I was like, oh my god, I'm not sure what she's doing here. She's yelling in front of the kids, but then she's obviously the kids hear her because the kid commented on it. So then she's saying, well, my what's important to me is to not let the kids see it. So we obviously know that that's full of shit. Then she starts with this whole like diet. You know, you think she's going to go into this diet culture thing, but then you see exactly where he gets it from her. Yeah, right. Of course. And then I mean, the whole thing is just so it's so cringy. And uh, and then she's like, sorry, I'm just in a really bad mood. And then, but it looks like they wind up eating pizza in the end. They they get access to the pizza again. I don't know, but it was one of those things where I was like, she needs to start like sh- this whole process needs to start moving forward. So that way, she can start her new life and get into a healthier mindset. But we have to remember, this is I guess three weeks after the reunion, right? Doesn't it seem well, like housewives time goes so differently than our own time? Like, I don't I even know, know how it lines up, but when they go to college, the ki- when the kids go to college, it's always like, oh, they're going off to college and the next season. They just graduated. I'm like, how did that happen? Yeah, but it seems like it's been all this time, but I guess it hasn't really. I don't know. It's it sucks. Anyway, it's hard to see the kids because the kids are so cute, you know, and yeah. and it's not only it's Lisa's that's being toxic. She's just the only one on camera, you know, but we know Lenny's a fucker. Lenny's terrible. Oh, story. yeah. God, it's just painful. So, fun times. Now we go over to Nicole and her son Grayson is there with her mom, Sorrel. And they're making guacamole and stuff. And Grayson is like really eager to have a little sister. He does not want to have a little brother because he doesn't want to have to share his toys. So they're sitting there like Sorrel starts talking about 
asked about how the new house is going and Nicole's talking about the renovations, but she goes, but you know what though? I love this condo living. You know, it's small, but it's cozy, even though it's like a gorgeous, huge condo with enormous doorways, you know? Yeah, so she lists all their homes. They have the Coral Gables, the newly built home in Colorado, some investment properties. And uh, so the mom's like, okay, so baby number two. So we have a house, we have a baby, so what else? And she's like, oh, well, everyone's asking about the wedding, but it's not really a rush for me, you know? Because like, I think that now that we're talking about baby number two, we just want the whole family in the wedding. And it just feels like maybe right to have the whole family first. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, do what you want, but as someone who wants to who likes her as her friend i'll be like oh hell no Mm -hmm. no 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 you better get married and get a prenup and make sure all of this shit is taken care of not so you could like get his money it's not about that but like if you're having kids with somebody who's really well taken care of i don't know well she is basically like well maybe i'll be forever engaged you know she's like i've been there done that and Sorrell's like, well, but you know by in Florida law that if you're not married, you get nothing. And Nicole's like, well, yeah, but look at Lisa. She was married, and she's still trying to figure out how to get money. So financial security doesn't come from a piece of paper. You create your own financial security, and that's why I learned from your situation. And then she basically says, like, look, I love the lifestyle that Anthony gives me, and we have this amazing, luxurious life, and I would definitely miss having my own personal pilot, basically, but um, I know I can take care of myself because, hello, I'm a doctor. So Yeah, and she is. That's true. That's all true, you know? So it's, like, good. I feel like she has a healthy... Like, I do like that she seems, at least she presents, like, I understand the risks, but I'm, I'm good. I'm set, no matter what. Yeah, I do too. You know, I guess that's why I like her at the end of the day. But I'm just, I guess my thing is like, if you're having kids with somebody, I want more contract. (laughs) I guess that's what I'm saying. For the kids, you know what I mean? But she's like, who needs it? I've already got an amazing career, you know? So I get that too. So now Martina Who am I to judge? But a judgmental fucking person. So (laughs) who are we to judge? Just two podcast hosts who sit here and do it every single day. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Martina and Julia arrive at a restaurant for dinner and um, Martina's starting to taste the food better, you know, as she's sort of emerging out of her cancer treatment. And she says, she talks about how she adds garlic to food a lot because that really helps. And Julia's like, oh, it doesn't help for, not for kissing. (laughs) Oh, well, do you plan on doing something kissable? If you're nice to me. And um, then Martina kind of, like, I think Julia thinks it's going to be nice and flirty, but then Martina's like, yeah, well, guess what? You failed to recognize the end of my treatment, and I had a moment by myself because it knocked me on my ass again, and my last treatment was three years ago, and not a peep out of you. You forgot. Julia's like, oh. (laughs) Yeah, she's like, well, the reason I forgot is because I was rehearsing the opera, but I cannot tell Martina, but there's no excuse for that. So she tells her, maybe I was doing, you know, different caring things, you know, making sure you eat versus maybe emotional support, but I am sorry. She's like, it's okay, darling, I love you so much. (laughs) So then um, Gertie (laughs) Martina's love language is like, gonna make you feel a little guilty for a second, and now we're good, so I love you. (laughs) They have a good communication, though, right? They do. They have a good, yeah. Yeah. Although I kind of, but like, I feel like when Martina finds out that the reason why uh, Julia wasn't there for her last treatment was because Julia was learning opera, she might be like, sweetie, you can't sing any better now than you did before the lesson, so you might as well have just been there for my treatments. (laughs) Just know for, for future situations. Honey, I've just gotten out of massive pain, and you're putting me back in it. So, yeah, honestly, next time, if you want to come up with an excuse, just say goat again. Like, I'll be fine with that. But opera, it's really hard for me to take. Really I prefer take. the goat in diapers. I have to be honest. <laughs> so Gertie comes and um, basically they start talking about cancer and what she can expect and stuff. And she's asking Martina about radiation. And, Ra- and Martina said that she just had it on her breast three days ago and that there were five sessions over 10 days and she had radiation on her throat because she had a du- the double whammy. And so she asked Gertie her plan and basically they start talking about chemo versus radiation and what happens to you when you're going through that stuff. And she right now she just wants to talk about radiation. She doesn't even want to talk about chemo. You know, that's like yeah. a whole different step for her that she's not ready yet. And she's and Gertie's asking about like you know what like radiation can you be intimate all this stuff 
And Martina says, yeah, I mean, your skin might get like a little red. And she's like, well, but I'm black. And actually, this really bothers Grody because when she tried to look up what happens, what's what happens to black skin, there was just like no information out there about it. And it was like very frustrating for her. But she's like reassured when Martina says that like you're still able to be intimate with radiation. And so Grody, it was actually a really, really nice scene. Um, and uh, it was lovely, actually. Okay, so then we go to Marcus and Lisa, Larsa, sorry, Marcus and Larsa. And she's like, hey, do you want, like, some water, like? And she's like, yeah, I want some water. Yeah, because I have some. Like, do you want to, like, shim my water? And he's like, yeah, I want to share the world with you, my love. Um, I want to share everything with you, Marcus. And he's like, yeah, I like water. And she's like, mm, that water looks so good. I'm, like, so th- What are you guys going to fuck each other over water? Pour the fucking water, are you kidding me? And it was like tap water. She's like, that water looks so good. I'm like, well, pour yourself a glass, you idiot. <laughs> so he's like, you excited for the game? She goes like, yeah. And like, I just like think that like, you know, like the girls are all going to donate. Because you can already tell this whole little thing here about like, oh, you can donate at this level or this level. And, you know, everyone's going to donate. Someone's not going to donate and it's going to be an issue. Or someone's not going to donate enough and she's going to make a stink. Because didn't she get in trouble for that at Gertie's event? Was it her who got in trouble? There was something. Larsa got in trouble at Gertie's event for something. I don't remember if it was about donating or not. But how much, you know, how much does it cost to be on the show? They already have to buy all these homes and all this stuff. And then they have to go to all these charity events and actually give thousands of dollars (laughs) at the charity event. Like, leave me alone. Can I just come to work? How about that? You know, this has definitely been fun. You know, doing this side by side with Marcus. We're both from the same place where basketball is like super important to us you know xyz it's like something that we both really love well he loves trying to play it i love trying to sleep with it i guess i don't know and uh sorry that sounded like slut shaming i didn't mean to just wanted to highlight the fact that larsa has had very close intimate relations with two people who are on the same championship team or family thereof i'm gonna stop now okay god that water looks really good he's like wow this this basketball game is sure going to be interesting. She's like, yeah, like, I really, like, hope, like, I feel like these girls, like, I hope they, like, feel like, like, I want to feel like, like, I'm in a positive state, like, you know? Because, like, any time, it could go south. And then six hours later, a sprinter van. Lisa's like, it smells like cheese in here. Lenny stole my cheese. Lenny won't even <laughs> buy me cheese. Fuck Lenny. And Mary Sol's like, oh, God, well, we're all stuck in the bus with you. I hope you don't get flatulent. Adriana, because Adriana's like, oh, there's corn. I had corn earlier, so I might have some flatulence. And Mary says, like, well, we're stuck on the bus with you. No, we're stuck with you. You, the hater, is the hater, Marisol. Shut up, because I'm. Shut, then Marisol and Smash is like sh- starts yelling. She's like, shut up, because if not, I'm gonna eat you alive. Adriana's like, shut up, Marisol. You're the one trying to fuck with my ex. Oh, you're just a drunk. You're high. You're wasted. And so basically oh, uh, chaos next week. <laughs> yeah. So. Fun times. So there's Miami. Good times as usual, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll be back tomorrow with a little Southern Charm. Sounds great. Talk to everyone later. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no Trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kiss Reno to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. 
Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Craftin's ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. Today, hip hop dominates pop culture, but it wasn't always like that. And to tell the story of how that changed, I want to take you back to a very special year in rap. 88, it was too much good music. The world was on fire. fire yeah. I'm Will Smith. This is Class of 88, my new podcast about the moments, albums, and artists that inspired a sonic revolution and secured 1988 as one of hip-hop's most important years. We'll talk to the people who were there. And most of all, we'll bring you some amazing stories. You know what my biggest memory from that tour is? It was your birthday. Yes, and you brought me to Sade, life-size cardboard cutout. <laughs> this is Class of 88, the story of a year that changed hip-hop. Listen to Class of 88 wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge the entire series right now on the Amazon Music app or Audible.